Hospitals across the U.S. are facing financial ruin. As the coronavirus spreads across rural America, many struggling hospitals are seeing a massive loss of revenue after they were forced to cancel profitable, non-emergency medical procedures. At the same time, many of those facilities are in urgent need of pricey ventilators to keep their COVID-19 patients alive. So I do believe that a lot of hospitals are holding off on uh, ordering ventilators because of the financial implications of this. And again, I think this is an issue with smaller hospitals. You know, for them, this could bankrupt many of those smaller hospitals. In Mississippi, 48% of rural hospitals are at serious financial risk, according to a study by Navigant, a professional services firm. Month of April is going to be devastating. Our hospital only volumes are down 40%. Our revenues are down 40%. I don't know what the volumes are down, but if you're a rural hospital and you lost money last year and in you were in the you were in the same mode that you were. This crisis needs to end today for those guys to survive. As of May 3, 2020, more than 86 percent of rural counties reported COVID-19 cases, totaling more than 66,000 people. And as the outbreak spreads, to save money, rural hospitals are furloughing workers like nurses and support staff at a time when healthcare professionals are needed the most. The question is, will rural hospitals go bankrupt buying ventilators? Ventilators, a critical resource in the battle against coronavirus, are in short supply. Ventilators help patients who cannot properly breathe by pumping air into their lungs. Ventilators are used for the most severe uh, coronavirus patients, right? The patients whose lungs just cannot function on their own, patients that can't breathe by themselves and are going into respiratory failure. But ventilators aren't a cure-all. According to a study published in the Journal of American Medical Association, the death rate for COVID-19 patients on ventilators in the New York City area was almost 90%. At the start of the coronavirus pandemic, there were about 160,000 ventilators in U.S. hospitals and less than 13,000 in reserve in the national stockpile. During a March 31st, 2020 press conference, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said that all 50 states and FEMA were in a bidding war with each other, trying to acquire ventilators and were in effect driving up the price. We're all trying to buy the same commodity, literally the same exact item. So you have 50 states competing to buy the same item. We all wind up bidding up each other and competing against each other, where you now literally will have a company call you up and say, well, California just outbid you. It's like being on eBay with 50 other states bidding on a ventilator. To make up for the shortfall, at least one hospital in New York City started putting two patients on a single device. Unlike their urban counterparts, rural hospitals have even fewer ventilators in stock. And so for roughly 60% of the nation's rural hospitals, they have one, maybe two ventilators on site. Um, now some of the larger ones will have up to four, but again, we're talking at a max four ventilators on site. Ventilators are a pricey piece of equipment for cash-strapped rural hospitals. The average cost of a ventilator is about $25,000, and the high-end machines can cost up to $50,000. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, several companies have ramped up production, hiring more employees, and moving workers to around-the-clock shifts. Medtronic, a medical device company, increased production of its high-performance ventilators by more than 40% and expects a five-fold increase in production by the end of June. Today we're at 300 a week, which is about uh, double what we had in January when this uh, uh, pandemic first started. Uh, by the end of April, we'll be at 400 a week. By May, we'll be at 700 a week. And then uh, by June, 1,000 a week. So great progress uh, in ramping up production. The company also plans to start selling a lower cost ventilator in the U.S. for under $10,000 that it offers in other countries. Philips said it would double the production of its ventilators and increase production to 4,000 ventilators a week by the third quarter of 2020. And automakers are involved in the effort too. 
In March 2020, General Motors and Ventec Life Systems announced plans to mass produce 30,000 ventilators. In April 2020, the first machines began arriving at Chicago area hospitals. Ford Motor Company announced a collaboration with GE Healthcare on March 30th, 2020, saying it would produce 50,000 ventilators within 100 days and up to 30,000 a month after if needed. But with the coronavirus quickly making inroads into rural America, hospitals might not have time to wait. You know, usually it could take 60 days to ramp up production. So even hypothetically, if a small rural hospital had the cash to purchase, let's say, five ventilators today, when those could be delivered is anyone's guess. A typical rural hospital has 25 beds, 58 days of cash on hand, and usually between zero and five ventilators. While ventilator production is on the rise, analysts think it's unlikely rural hospitals will be purchasing the machines anytime soon. Well, I don't think they're going to be buying them. I'll be honest with you. They just do not have the, the money to do so. I mean, if they can get them, whether it's from the stockpile or a donation, that's one thing. But they're really not going to be putting out the money because they don't have the ability to, to purchase these in small, you know, rural hospitals. Instead, what could spell financial ruin for many small town American hospitals is the loss of a big chunk of their annual revenue. We project 400 rural hospitals to be at risk. And without substantial federal state intervention in this crisis, um, it's, it's reasonable to expect um, hundreds of rural hospitals to close over the next six months. Rural hospitals had a number of problems that preceded the coronavirus pandemic. Prior to the outbreak, about half of rural hospitals operated in the red. Rural hospitals tend to have lower patient volume than their big city counterparts and treat people that are generally older and sicker and rely heavily on Medicaid and Medicare. And hospitals in states that didn't expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act are in a weaker financial position too, according to studies. Texas is one of several states that refused to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act foregoing an estimated $100 billion of federal funding in the 10 years to 2029. The state has already seen 15 hospitals close since 2010. COVID-19 has only added to those problems. Hospitals make a big chunk of their revenue from high ticket services like cardiac surgery and cancer care, and a lot less money from things like intensive care units and Medicaid patients. To prepare for the influx of coronavirus patients, medical facilities across the country canceled most elective procedures. When you're talking about rural hospitals right now, it's really a tale of, of, of two different cities, if you would. The vast majority of them have um, stopped all elective procedures and they're losing money right now. In an effort to stem their financial losses, more than 150 hospitals and hospital systems in the U.S. have furloughed tens of thousands of workers, like nurses and support staff. And at a time when hospitals are needed more than ever, some rural hospitals are shutting down completely. It is safe to say more than half of the nation's rural hospitals have either furloughed or reduced um, uh, a payroll at this time. Um, that is a safe estimate. It's probably more along the lines of 70 to 80 percent of the rural hospitals have had to do this. On April 15, 2020, Decatur County General Hospital in Parsons, Tennessee, closed, becoming the 14th rural hospital in the state to shut down in the past eight years, according to Becker's Healthcare. The following week, William Memorial Hospital in Southern West Virginia closed its doors, citing a decline in volume from the current pandemic as a reason for the closure. And since January 2005, 170 rural hospitals in the U.S. have closed. King's Daughters Medical Center is a 99-bed hospital in Brookhaven, Mississippi, about two hours north of New Orleans. Lincoln County, Mississippi, where the hospital is located, has 155 confirmed coronavirus cases and 12 deaths from the disease as of May 6, 2020. Monday, we had 19 patients in the hospital. Today, we've got about 
10 or 11 patients. We still have four patients on the vent. Uh, Monday, we had five patients on the vent. After elective procedures were canceled, the hospital experienced a 30% drop in revenue, comparing income from the first half of March to the last half of the month. I expect us to lose a million and a half dollars, maybe $2 million. That's, you know, I don't, I don't hardly make that much in a year. And to lose that much in a month is hard to imagine. To save money, the hospital furloughed over 75 employees and reduced the hours for almost 100 more, saving $250,000 a month. One thing to be concerned about is when you look at the current finances of rural hospitals, they're laying off staff, um, they're furloughing staff, they're cutting uh, uh, salaries, um, they're struggling to keep their de doors open, they're currently struggling to make payroll. So the obvious question is, are they in a position now to purchase ventilators? Um, that's, that's an unknown that we don't know at this point. Um, it's going to be highly unlikely that they're going to look towards purchasing any type of medical equipment, certainly ventilators in a time when they're just trying to make payroll. At the start of the outbreak, the hospital had only five ventilators. A request was made to the national stockpile, but none came. A nearby hospital donated a machine, and they found an older ventilator in the back of a closet. We since found an old adult vent in a closet, been in the closet for 10 or 12 years because it was out of service. We sent it off and got it refurbed, and so that gave us seven vents. According to Hoover, if additional COVID-19 patients require ventilation, the hospital could convert some anesthesia machines to low-grade ventilators or transfer patients to a nearby hospital. I think the great concern, obviously, is you have a rural hospital that has um, exceeded its max capacity, has utilized its ventilator, and is unable to find a larger facility that it can transfer to at this time. As a backup plan, in case other facilities were overwhelmed, the hospital adopted a scarce resource policy for allocating the ventilators to patients who would benefit the most. We started looking around to see what other people were doing, and, and we found several examples out there of scarce resources policies that scored, scored your patients according to conditions that they have. It wasn't age-related or disability-related. If you had a cardiac problem, you got this, this problem. If you were a cancer patient and under treatment, you got this score. And so it's a, it's a uh, very objective scoring system. But despite the dire financial outlook, Hoover said the hospital has seen a drop in the number of patients since April 17, 2020. And he is hopeful the worst is behind them.